usually i take four days ha huh? four full days but uh, you are uh, privileged that you will have only three days ha huh? huh? so i have some other engagements program some other people but whatever is essential you will be told so don't worry about it so monday tuesday wednesday i am at your service thursday you will study and then uh, friday you will have a short written exam of one hour maximum this is the program saturday you will have your time for your thesis uh, copy of the copy of the copies <laughs> okay for that you will be left okay uh, do not worry about the exam my whole purpose is that you become well aware of the law of the church during these times feel free to interact with me ask me questions any time there are no stupid questions only stupid answers eh huh? stupid answers there are no stupid questions that is my belief I always tell my MCL fathers those who are specializing in canon law after the ordination for 3 years if any of you succeeds in making me angry during the class I will take you out for a dinner but they are not succeeding no in the class I will not no, no. during the class uh, during the class no. during the class they have not succeeded they are not succeeded i may be firm but i will not get angry during the class because i want my students to provoke me as much as possible ask me some pertinent questions sometimes when they put me down uh, when the professors puts them down they will be very very hesitant to ask questions also you can ask me any questions so don't ask me how are you father <laughs> ah, okay all right otherwise the purpose of my uh, this course is to make you aware that there is something known as canon law and especially is uh, for the religious there are constitutions directories statutes you already heard of what it already starting from your aspirancy they have taught you constitutions history of the congregation and so on but as a canonist uh i will be able to shed some more light on it i believe i don't usually use powerpoint because i believe that my points have more power than the powerpoint <laughs> and, uh, this morning for example we did not have any power uh, it was very tough uh, when some people use powerpoints when there is no power they don't have any points uh, for me i trust myself the bird on the branch uh is not trusting uh, the branches the branches may break but it trusts its wings to fly so i also trust myself trust myself uh, that i can communicate to you the law of the church some of the things which i'll be sharing these days may be may look elementary very basic but doesn't increase the volume yeah because of the noise outside i'm humble in many things but i'm very proud of my voice uh. <laughs> first of all i want you to be convinced that we need the law in the society in the church there is a saying ubi societas ebi us in latin it is ubi societas ebi us i want to write it in latin Can, canon law means even civil law means it is always law to be societas e b us what is the meaning wherever there is society there is law wherever there is society u b means where where society there e b means there wherever there is society there is law in other words wherever there is a community there is law church is a community church also needs laws imagine this traffic in the city of bangalore in spite of so many laws there is congestion often there is traffic jam imagine there were no traffic laws survival of the fittest one who goes first always takes advantage over the others 
people think others should not come from the side they only have to go law is meant to protect the rights of all the individuals and to help them to fulfill the obligations law facilitates exercise of rights law facilitates exercise of rights and fulfillment of obligations of obligations law regulates a relationship regulates relationship law is for the common good so law facilitates exercise of rights law facilitates fulfillment of obligations law regulates relationship law is meant for the common good common good one or two wants to have their breakfast at 4 o'clock in the morning means we all cannot get up at 4 o'clock another wants to have only at 11 o'clock they sleep so long we cannot we are in a community okay an agreeable time reasonable time which is convenient for all of us we have a specific time for breakfast for lunch for dinner and so on so you should be convinced about it you can't be a law unto yourself you should think of others whenever we are living in the community uh, law also brings in order in the community also common good there is some kind of discipline order in the community also so we need laws st thomas aquinas gave a beautiful definition of law i want you to write it down law is nothing but you all uh, hear me well no english i won't write everything on the board uh, law is nothing but an ordinance of reason ordinance of reason of reason for the common good common good ordinance of reason for the common good promulgated promulgated by one by one who has the care of the community who has the sorry, has the care of the community so so i repeat law is nothing but an ordinance of reason for the common good promulgated by one who has the care of the community it's a very beautiful definition of law later on i will be teaching some of your aspirants and novices and so on so teach this definition of st thomas aquinas st thomas aquinas i don't ask you to teach in latin but in english only eh? lex nihil aliud est ordinatio rationis ad bonum commune abeo coram communitatis habet promulgata he said it in latin so don't say amen at the end eh? <laughs> we don't understand <laughs> no, we simply say amen so that is the english translation of the definition so when we analyze this definition you will know uh, the real meaning of law first of all ordinance means it is a command it is an order so write also the meaning those of you who feel sleepy write a little more also huh? uh, ordinance means it is an order it is a command it is not a suggestion or recommendation so you have to say it is order so all of you must be in the class at 9 o'clock means you are requested to be at 9 o'clock means some people may say oh requested only no 9:30 also i can come like that huh? it is a command class begins at 9 o'clock law is a command so uh, think of the 10 commandments Uh, thou shall not commit adultery you are requested not to commit adultery 
Uh, you are requested, thou shall not steal. You are suggested not to steal. No. It's a command. Command means it is binding. You are obliged to follow it. Sometimes people don't distinguish between what is a suggestion, what is recommendation, what is consultation and what is a command. Some of the sisters, maybe because of uh, a communication problem I think, uh, Father, I am going for marketing. Are you ask, Are you giving information or asking permission? We don't know. <laughs> so you are going for marketing, okay. Do you, want, do you want permission or information? You should know, Father, will you allow me to go for marketing? I would like to go for marketing, <coughs> will you permit me? So that's the way you have to ask, I am going, this is even some seminary, even some deacon, they will say like that. This is a command, you should distinguish between permission and information. So law is a command, law is a command. So ordinance, it is binding. So secondly, it uh, ordinance of reason, law must be reasonable. What the law commands, must be reasonable, must be reasonable. When I say reasonable, I especially mean three things. It must be just, it should not be unjust. It must be just. For example, the laws of taxation. Sometimes they are proportionate according to the ability of the people to pay. If they earn more, they have to pay a little more to the government. You should not fleece the poor. Even when you collect fees later on as sister administrators, see to it that you have rules and regulations which you want the children and the teachers to follow are reasonable. You may be asking, some of the sisters are heartless, asking the teachers to come at 7 o'clock, 7.30 because of special code, sending them at 8.30. They have a family, they have to cook, they have to wash, they have to clean. Think of all that also. You are there in the convent sometimes taken care of. Some are doing the work by themselves, cooking. But there are some congregations who have girls to look after the kitchen and so on. Think of the families. What you command must be just. Even when you are asking every time some collection, every alternate day, sister becomes a collector by becoming a sister. <laughs> sister. So, loss must be just. Have a heart. Have the sensitivity of Jesus, sensitivity of Mother Mary, especially one principle my Archbishop of Pondicherry always used to say, with regard to others, you be generous and lenient. With regard to yourself, you be as strict as possible. Being strict with yourself, lenient with others, generous with others. That should be our policy, life policy. What you would not do, don't impose it on others. Loss must be just. Laws must be just. So, just unjust laws are no laws at all. Unjust laws are no laws at all. So, that's why there is one canon, canon 22, which says, which asks all the Catholics to follow civil law. We have to follow civil law. Civil law also is supposed to be just only. We have to follow, especially with regard to property buying and selling goods and all. We have to follow the civil law. 22 is called canonization of civil law. But except in two cases. One case is, if civil law is against divine law, do not follow civil law. Civil law says, don't worship your God. Then you should not follow the civil law. Civil law legalizes abortion. You should not follow civil law. Other than that, you always follow the civil law. Civil law must be followed as though it were canon law. Canon number 22 says that we have to follow. Or another exception is when there is an equivalent provision in canon law, you follow canon law. So except in these two cases, all the Catholics must follow civil law. Especially with regard to temporal goods. You should not bring... Uh, uh, damage to the church, cause harm to the church by non-observance of civil law. So you are the superior of the local convent. You put up a new building. Municipality regulations say it must be 10 feet or 10 meters from the main road. Don't put up the building uh, just near the compound wall. Then the corporation officials will come and demolish the building. So why? Because you did not follow the civil law, you are causing damage and loss to that congregation. 
So observe the civil law very minutely, filing the tax returns and everything, doing everything in accordance uh, with the law. These are things that are very important. Why I am saying laws must be just. Then laws must be possible. Laws must be possible. There is a saying, nobody is bound to do the impossible. Nobody is bound to do the impossible. What you command must be possible. So, suppose you say every day in our congregation, one hour, only hour is there. But do not say, every day uh, people should uh, have the only hour standing upside down. <laughs> or only kneeling only one hour. May be possible for some people, some people it's not possible. Don't put all these things which are cannot be executed. Law must be possible, possible. Then law must be useful. Useful. This is what I mean by our and Thomas Aquinas means by law must be reasonable. Reasonable. Do not say things that are unreasonable. Unreasonable. The problem is sometimes what you think reasonable is not reasonable to the formators, to your superiors. That is the whole problem. But I think, for example, seminarians do not need mobile. I think I am reasonable. And then seminarians think that they need mobile, that they are reasonable. Sometimes we have to yield to the wisdom of the superiors, at least as long as it lasts. So I told them that, I asked uh, the brothers also, uh, why you do you need mobile? Why do you need mobile? Uh, to whom you have to talk? Okay, there are common mobiles, five or six. So you can always make calls through that to the uh, friend. How often you want to talk? I want to talk to my mother. How often you want to talk? Daily you want to talk to your mother? It's in, once in a week. So once in a week means uh, uh, once in uh, four times in a week. Is it worth a mobile having for yourself? But they don't want to talk to mother. They want to talk to many other mothers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Many other sisters, many other people. Sometimes we have mobile not for our ministry, for contacting people whom we are not supposed to contact, whom we need not contact also. <laughs> whom we need not contact also. He said, what fun that there is all the time mobile, every day also you can make call, uh, you can come to the... So they give us, no, no, father, people look down on us if we don't have mobile. No, such kind of uh, humiliation doesn't matter. Because people look down on us if you don't have mobile, some seminarians want to have mobile. Uh, and then in spite of that, you know, so many of them having stealthily. Hmm? Stealthily means without the knowledge of the superiors. Uh, traditionally they say, um, three things the Holy Spirit doesn't know. You might have heard of it already. The names of the congregations, where do the salvations get money from? And then thirdly, what is the next theology Jesuits will teach? Uh, immediately, every alternate day they will change the new theology. So to that I have added the fourth one. How many seminarians and sisters have mobile without the knowledge of their superiors? Even the Holy Spirit doesn't know. Listen. So, there are, even, even among the staff, there is difference of opinion. There are, okay, there we are 30 means some fathers are allowing them, even the seminarians, to have the mobile. Some of them, like me, traditional, they don't want to allow them. As long as they are seminarians, they don't need it. For that, other purposes, there are common mobile like that. They have a different opinion. So, it is 50-50 or 40-60, like that, difference of opinion. Uh, difference of opinion, what, what to do like that. There may be advantages, there may be disadvantages, is it really necessary and uh, things like that or that. But then finally, is it unreasonable? You should not impose upon them unreasonable. What I think is, if we are not able to implement the law, better to remove the law. So let the law need not remain only in the book and majority of them don't follow. If you are taking it seriously, then you have to find out who is having and then they must be held responsible. That is the thing. But one thing you can know that human law can always change. Human law must also change. Must also change. I have the different rule books of the seminary which was there uh, earlier and all. There it was said when the seminarians go for walk, they have to go always in a group and led by the senior deacon. 
and something interesting was written while going for a walk let the seminarians observe modesty of eyes <laughs> if we say today brother then why are we going for a walk only they will say huh let the seminarians observe modesty of eyes uh, for their uh, for the edification of others and for their own salvation it seems <laughs> Uh, for the edification of others, and uh, then sometime back uh, the deacons also can uh, go for walk, but they have to go in cassock. Some twenty years ago, go in a cassock. One deacon is saying, "Father, when we go in cassock, everybody looks at us. When we don't go in cassock, we look at everybody." <laughs> We want to look at uh, everybody. Why we have to go in walk? Better we don't know. If we want to go in cassock and walk, we will go within the campus only. Uh, within the campus only. Then, then it was relaxed some 20, 25 uh, years ago, uh, like that. Human law can always change. Only uh, unreasonable people uh, will not change. They will be inflexible. Inflexible. We have to change. We have to compromise. no certain things certain basic things some people are so adamant they think that they are principle life unnecessary things recently i was i got a message then said my apology to you doesn't mean that you are right i am wrong it is only that i am ready to bury my ego to preserve our relationship i liked it very much my apologizing to you doesn't mean you are right that i am wrong only that i am ready to bury my ego to preserve our relationship relationship so is and paul also said let the sunset not find you still angry so we should be the first to always take the initiative to make peace with people doesn't matter better to go to heaven than to die as uh, angry people angry people okay doesn't matter a bit of spirituality because you are in the indian institute of spirituality i don't want to go into the terms in detail as i would do for the fathers who are specializing in canon law spiritualizing the law of the church won't do any harm you will be saved huh? don't worry so law must be just possible and useful law must be just possible and useful then as i already said law is for the common good law is for the common good common good so we always say tell uh, those days even in indian institute of spirituality we had a problem some sisters when they pick up the mobile uh, this common landline phone they will never keep only uh, they forget that landline is meant for so many other sisters also uh, other sisters don't say the other person is calling you are you should have the courtesy to tell that person some of the sisters have conscience the same phone is used to contact other sisters also so try to finish the conversation within 3 minutes if you make doesn't matter uh, if you make also the same problem even if you are receiving call also the same problem you can't make take advantage of yourself let's say the rule okay within 3 minutes or 4 minutes some place is automatically it will be cut like this rule so people go on talking and talking unendingly in the common form that is really unjust common good is not preserved common good is not preserved then what do you speak about you conduct a beautiful prayer service on justice my god <laughs> this sister who is all the time huh, holding the common phone as if her personal property she is conducting a Uh, beautiful prayer service and bhajan and things like that going on singing unendingly also there also so basic thing law is for the common good common good you want to listen to loud music there is another person in the same hostel who has the right to recollection prayer who wants to study seriously do not disturb others one of the uh, principle in common life is is my action or speech disturbing others causing harm to others you have to constantly ask yourself disturbing others so even when i play i don't have tv now those days when i had tv and all i used to uh, uh, increase the volume and then come outside my room and see whether it is heard 
you know, I am a staff member uh, teaching so many years, but still I will be so conscious. People who are even walking in the veranda should not hear, should not be disturbed. Should not be disturbed. Okay, when people are there, there is silence time. So you go on walking in the corridors and talking and then making noise. I mean, there is no need. You can communicate what you need in low voice. So this is one of the things. Okay, recreation time, okay. Other times, there are times when other people are studying or praying or in. Do not disturb others. There was one Father Tekel, my own professor of moral theology. He will speak only few words, very slowly. We can't hear it properly. Those days itself, he was always using the mic. So he will say, the students used to make fun of him. Uh, what is his spiritual direction? Very, very brief spiritual direction within one minute. <laughs> what is the spiritual direction when the students go? Are you okay, brother? Yes, father. Huh? Any problem? No problem. Do you want to make confession? No father. Go. Spiritual direction? No father. <laughs> uh, three questions. Uh, spiritual direction? Oh, over. So they used to speak of him. It's said of so many other people. Once when he began to preach, he said it seems uh, something is wrong with the mic. Students thought the Lord be with you. So say, yeah, and also with you they said. Something is wrong with the mic, like that they used to say. So when brothers talk in their rooms, or somebody enters the room of another, he will go and slowly knock. The brother will come. Brother, if you disturb me, I will disturb you. <laughs> that is his words. If you disturb me, that means I will disturb you, means you will be sent out of the seminary. <laughs> now that is the way. Do not disturb others. Do not disturb others. To do not make unnecessary noise, shouting aloud and calling everywhere. In some convents they have also, instead of shouting, they will ring the bell. Remember, uh, uh, bell number one means uh, this sister, bell number one, two means this sister. They are like, that is okay at least, tolerable. Uh, that is tolerable. Because this sister cannot climb and then uh, call that sister and look for and by the time more uh, expense for that. Some other shouting aloud, uh, not having people who are uh, very, very uh, healthy and all. If it is possible, do not disturb others. Why should the whole community know that so and so got the phone? Maybe that is a way of checking also, it seems. Who gets more? All the time, number three is rang or <laughs> number four is rang, then we will know like that also. So one thing is, do not disturb others. Do not disturb, common good. Common good. Be ready to sacrifice your personal good for the sake of common good. Then I said law, who can make the law? As I already said, some of the uh, students want to make law for the professors. <laughs> it is the authority which has to make the law for the subjects, those who are interested. The Sri Sant Damasekina said, those who have the care of the community, you may say spiritually, Father, we care for you. Father Benny, Father Philip, we care for you. Okay, but you can't make laws for them. <laughs> they are supposed to make uh, rules for you, those who are here. Those who have the care of the community. Care of the community means those who are the competent authority can make the law for others. If you simply understand this definition of St. Thomas alone, then you have studied something behind the, uh, the basis of all law. Uh, the basis of all law. Then law must be promulgated, means it must be notified to the subjects. Those who are supposed to follow the law must know the law. Must know the law, promulgated. Only then it is binding. It is binding. It must be made known to the law. Made known to the subjects. Made known to the people. Promulgation means to place before the people. In fact, we have what is known as vacatio legis, when there is old law and then new law. When the new law is promulgated, then normally three months time is given if it is common law. If it is particular law, one month time is given for, uh, for transition, for smooth transition from old law to new law. Suppose I announce the law today, then I will say from next week it is binding. It must be made known to the people. Normally, they will give you a, a time for the new law to come into effect. That is called in Latin vacatio legis, means the new law takes vacation. 
So it is announced, but then it takes a vacation. From when it is binding. Vacatio legis. That is technical word. Vacatio, Latin. Vacatio legis. Normally there is time that the people may come to know the new law and follow the law. Vacatio legis. So it must be promulgated. There is vacatio legis. There is a gap. And then the new law comes into effect. Comes into effect. I share with you uh, an example for us. So in one congregation, you know, many congregations have also local counselors, isn't it? Local superior and then local counselors. <coughs> one sister was notified of her transfer. But then after one month only she is supposed to go to the new place. So this sister voted to elect the local counselor in the outgoing community. In the community from which she is going, there she voted. Uh, and then two sisters, two counselors were chosen also with her vote. Then after one month she went to the new community. In that community election was afterwards only. There also she voted. The superior general of the congregation was very upset. How can she vote in two places? Especially she did not want her um, she did not like her voting in the first community because I have already transferred. Hmm? I have already transferred her. So she, she was very furious. The reason is Superior General herself did not like the one elected as counselor in that local community, in that big community. So she wanted to take action against her. Then she consulted me. I told sister, when does this, this sister cease to be the member of the old community, I asked. That, is the first, that was my first question. Uh, then sister said, is it at the moment of your notifying the transfer to her? Or is it at the moment of her taking charge in the new community? Then she said, um, when she takes charge in the new community, till that time she is member only. Even though transfer has come, as soon as you get the transfer, you don't cease to be member of this old day community. Then she got a shock. I asked her this simple question only. So she ceases to be member of the old community only when she takes charge of the new community, new community. Then I said, it is not wrong that she voted in the old community. When she voted in the old community, she was member of that community. When she voted in the new community, she was member of the new community. So you cannot take any action against her. Uh, we are impulsively, emotionally, if you take action against her, it is wrong. I told the general very boldly. Secondly, if you do not want people like that to vote, then you should say, once they have received the transfer, they should not vote. You should make it known to the other sisters, sisters of the congregation. You must notify, you must inform the sisters. So the sister concerned is not at fault. You will be at fault if you take action, I said. Then... Father, thank you for the advice. So she said. You see, why I am saying law must be notified. Sometimes law, law is conceived in the mind. Law is born when it is promulgated. Law comes into effect after the time gap. After the vacatio pledges. You understand? That's why promulgated, known to them. I told you like this. No, you did not do like that. No. And there is also another canon. This is treated in canon 8. Canon number 8. C8. Uh, it is treated vacatio legis. And then canon 9 says, Laws concern matters of the future, not those of the past. You should not go for a movie. Suppose today it is, if you are going out for a movie, uh, then uh, you will be sent out of the seminary. Suppose the rector says like this today. Then... Uh, it is uh, uh, says like this uh, today. Then he should not send out people who were going for movie last month. Because last concern matters of the future. Matters of the future. So I explain this definition for one hour because this is important. To have the basis of law doesn't matter. Uh, think of it. If you know this.